Hey everybody, this is Joe slash Foozle, and I'm going to assume that if you're watching this video, you've already decided, or you are at least thinking about using Construct 3 to make video games. Or maybe you're already using the tool, but you keep finding yourself running into problems and not sure how to solve them. Well, this video is going to teach you how to learn how to use Construct 3. And that might sound a bit silly, but if you think about it, it's probably one of the most important skill sets that we can have as game developers, regardless of engine. If you get stuck for too long, it can be very frustrating, and your efficiency goes way down. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump on in for Construct 3. When you open up a Construct 3 project file, there are two main areas that you're going to spend most of your time in. The first is the layout environment, and this is where you organize all the objects inside of your game. You can add objects here, you can organize them on different layers. This is what your player is going to see when they're exploring your world. The second environment is the event sheet. This is Construct 3's visual scripting environment, and it allows you to set up a sequence of conditions and actions that control the flow and logic of your game. So those are the two environments at a very high level. But now I wanna focus in on what are those objects? What are the things that we're gonna to use to create our game with? What are the building blocks? Well, Construct 3 has two primary elements that you can use to quickly create simple and complex games, plugins and behaviors. Plugins are the basic building blocks of Construct 3. You can think of them as different types of objects like sprites, etc. Behaviors are elements which can be attached to these plugins to add additional functionality to them. Maybe it's a platform or a behavior or an eight direction movement. There is also system, which is kind of a special case. System exists in every Construct 3 project right from the start, and it adds some base functionality that is needed for pretty much every project. For now, let's focus in on plugins and behaviors, and we'll get back to system later. All plugins have the same basic structure, and you can find everything they have to offer by looking at just four places. The first is properties. They show the various attributes of the plugin as well as enable a way to quickly edit the instance of the plugin you have selected. This is accessible inside of the layout environment. The next three places that you can access that show what plugins have to offer are all found inside of the event sheet. When you go to the event sheet and add an event, the first thing you can do is create what's called a condition. A condition tells you when to do something. And there are many plugins that have specific relevant conditions. The next thing you can do is add what is called an action. When you navigate to the plugin, you'll see a set of actions that are pertinent to that plugin. And finally, you have access to what is called expressions. These are used to expose information relevant to the plugin, which can be used in actions and conditions. Sometimes you'll see actions, conditions, and expressions referred to as ace. The aces of the plugins are what make the plugin special to their various use cases. All right, let's move on to behaviors. All behaviors have the same basic structure, and you can find out everything they have to offer by looking at those four places as well. As you can see, when I attach a behavior to a plugin, additional information appears in the properties of the plugin. Additionally, more actions, conditions, and expressions are available under the plugin as well. Here you can see how they remain organized by the behavior to easily find what you are looking for. Additionally, the expressions of a behavior can be accessed by typing in the plugin name dot behavior dot expression. You can see as I type, it will attempt to autocomplete for you as well, helping you find what you're looking for. One more item to note is that you can add behaviors to some, but not all plugins. For example, you can't add behaviors to the array plugin. Now that we know where to look to find all the things plugins and behaviors have to offer, let's find out how we can learn more about them and their functionality if we need it. There are four flavors of information sources you should really be aware of. First and foremost is the manual. The construct manual is very well done and easy to navigate. This should be the first reference you keep handy. In addition to detailing out the actions, conditions, and expressions, it also details out the various nuances you may encounter while working on your game. Remember the system object we talked about earlier that's just found in every single project automatically? Well, here's a great place to learn all about the various system actions, conditions, and expressions. I would definitely recommend taking a look at the expressions. It has a ton of built-in functions that come in handy in all different kinds of situations. So when you aren't sure what some action, condition, or expression does, you just need to ask yourself, is this a plugin, a behavior, or is it part of system? Is it an action, a condition, or an expression? Then you just navigate to the right plugin, or behavior, or system reference, and then navigate to the right section to figure out what you need to know relevant to that particular ace. So now that you know how to use the manual, the second place you can always look for more information is by browsing the amazing built-in example projects that come right inside of Construct. 
There are literally hundreds by now, ranging from examples showing one specific feature up to complete demo games. You can find the examples right on the start page in the editor. You just click the Browse Examples button to open up the full example browser. Here you can either use search or use tags as filters to find what you are looking for. If you want to learn about a specific plugin or behavior, you can filter by that tag and this will give you more focused examples. It is also a lot of fun just to kind of navigate through these and browse the examples because oftentimes you'll learn something new that you didn't even know you were looking for. So definitely take the time to browse through these examples, especially when you're trying to solve a specific problem. An additional item to note is that when you are browsing the examples and you click on it, there will be two icons, a play button and a folder button. The play button runs the example and you can preview what it does, whereas the folder button opens the project in the editor and then you can see exactly how it was done. So this makes it really efficient to browse the examples and find what you're looking for. The third source of information, if the first two really don't help you solve your problem, are tutorials. Now, there is an official location on Construct's website dedicated to tutorials. It's presented in a step-by-step -step format, many of which have been created by the community. I've used this quite a bit, and I've often found that there are some real gems in here, so definitely give this area a look. And then of course there is YouTube, which does have a number of examples that have been created by a bunch of different developers over the last handful of years. So definitely give this a consideration and search inside of YouTube for your specific problem. <laughs> and this would be a good time for me to ask you as a creator myself to consider subscribing or giving a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this content. It's free for you to do and it makes a big difference for me. Okay, so the fourth and final stop on our journey, if all else fails, is reaching out and asking for help. This can be done on the community forum or the unofficial community discord where many experienced developers hang out. I'll leave a link in the description to the discord. It's also a great way to meet other people using the tool and to share your progress for feedback, which is always invaluable. Okay, everybody, thanks for your time and I hope you found this video useful. Special thanks to the developer Attack Attacker who had the idea and even wrote most of this script for this video. Good luck on your game dev journey and welcome to the concert community if you are now.